This is the first case. The patient name was Sarah Newberry and was described by the physician Samuel Solly. You can see that the lady here is in great distress and she has fractures of multiple bones and all these has made her cachectic and bedridden. And then autopsy was done. You can see that the sternum has multiple lytic areas which are like punched out holes within the bones. Similarly, when you see the femoral cavities, you can see lytic lesions, big ones in the head of the femur, in the neck of the femur, similarly in the upper body of the femur and in the lower part of the femur. So let us understand how does these lytic lesions come about in myeloma. So first understand the basics. So where does B cell maturation normally occur? Normally in the bone marrow, there is a pro B cell, which becomes a pre B cell and an immature B cell. And these immature B cells come out of the bone marrow and enters into the peripheral lymphoid organs. These peripheral lymphoid organs are the lymph nodes and the spleen. When it enters into the lymph nodes, it is called as a naive B cell, which means a B cell which is a virgin B cell, which has not been exposed to any antigen as of now. Then it becomes a naive activated B cell when it is coming in contact with the germinal center. And after it enters the germinal center, it becomes a germinal center B cell. After exit from the germinal center, but just prior to exit from the lymph node, it is called as a post germinal center B cell. After exposure to the antigen, it gains memory for that specific antigen and so that whenever it encounters an antigen in the near future, it will mount an immune response much rapidly than it was with, with a naive B cell. And then it becomes a plasma blast and these plasma blasts or post germinal center mature B cells which have been exposed to the antigen, they home back to the bone marrow and where it becomes a plasma cell. So when you see all the B cell maturity markers, you can see that all of them are C1920 positive along with immunoglobulin positivity, which is a marker of a mature B cell surface immunoglobulin. But when it comes to the plasma cell, the C19 is positive or negative. The C20 is lost. The, the plasma cell markers that is C27, C38, C138 is lost and these typically plasma cells are positive for both the light chains that is kappa as well as lambda so normal plasma cells express both kappa as well as lambda when it becomes restricted to only kappa or only lambda that is called as a phenomenon of light chain restriction that means that a plasma cell has become clonal and it is not a normal plasma cell that plasma cell which is light chain restricted is called a clonal plasma cell or a cancerous plasma cell or an abnormal plasma cell. So when it comes to the B cell maturation with respect to the antigen dependence, you can see that in the bone marrow, the progenitor B cells become the naive B cells towards the exit of uh, their face on the bone marrow. And once they enter into the lymph nodes again, few of them who are not exposed to the antigen or who get exposed to the antigen but still they do not mount any immune response, they die and they are sacrificed. So only those 10% who actually get exposed to the antigen and they actually mount some immune response, they are selected and these B cells are called as the activated B cells. Out of the, uh, uh, After the activated B cells, uh, there is a phenomenon of somatic hypermutation called SHM wherein these B cells have B cell receptors. On the B cell receptors, there is an immunoglobulin heavy chain variable region. We will come to that portion in the next few slides. So just like in the T cells, there is a T cell receptor. In the B cells, there is a B cell receptor. Within that B cell receptor per se, there is an immunoglobulin heavy chain variable region, which is what determines the specificity of a B cell for something which is exposed to an antigen. So these B cells undergo series of maturation after exposure to the antigen and there is a sequential change in their immunoglobin heavy chain variable region over a period of time. This sequential change over a period of time is called as somatic hypermutation. Why somatic? Because it is not happening germline, not from birth. It is a phenomenon which is occurring after birth and hypermutation means something which was present at germline has been changed multiple number of times with a series of mutations and changes in order to make it capable enough for for identifying a specific antigen and then mounting an immune response. That process is called as somatic hypermutation. After a somatic hypermutation, there is a phenomenon called as class switch recombination or CSR, wherein normally the B cells do express immunoglobulin M, 
immunoglobulin D, immunoglobulin A, immunoglobulin E, all the immunoglobulins. But after the phenomenon of class switch recombination, a plasma cell or a B cell will express only one immunoglobulin that is either IgM or either IgA or either IgD or either IgE or either IgG. That phenomenon of becoming more and more specific with respect to a single immunoglobulin exposure on its surface is called as class switch recombination after the process of somatic hypermutation. So you can imagine somatic hypermutation is a process where just like in UPSC exam, you have multiple aspirants which are giving the exam. So out of 1 lakh aspirants who give the exam, only say 1000 get selected and come for the interview or those 1000 only 100 come and actually go uh, into the uh, IAS exams. So just like that you have multiple lakhs of B cells which are entering the lymph node, naive B cells getting exposed to the antigen or those lakhs 90% are ruled out, they die and the remaining 10% get uh, go ahead, undergo the process of somatic hypermutation and then become the post germinal center mature B cells after the process of somatic hypermutation and then they become the plasma cells and these plasma cells secrete antibodies and these antibodies will have both kappa as well as lambda light chains but they will have only one immunoglobulin isotype. So when it comes to an immunoglobulin structure you have two components in immunoglobulin. The inner one which is the longer one is called as a heavy chain and the outer one which is a lighter one is called as a light chain. The light chain is 25,000 molecular weight in Daltons whereas the heavy chain is twice the size and 50,000 Daltons. Now both uh, the, con the heavy chains as well as light chain have a variable portion and the, and the constant portion. So the distal most part which is the antigen binding part is what constitutes the variable region of both the heavy as well as light chains. The variable has only one constant portion uh, whereas uh, the, the, the light chain has only one constant portion whereas the inner one longer one uh, that is heavy chain has one, two and three uh, constant portions in the heavy chain CH1, CH2 and CH3 whereas in the light chain there is only one constant portion. So you can see that the heavy chain is bigger, it is medial, the light chain is smaller, it is lateral and the distal mode pass that is a variable region actually constitute the antigen binding domain. So it is a variable region which is very important with respect to the binding of the antigen. And when we see this in more detail, the antigen binding region is also called as a fab region which basically binds the antigen. Then in between there is a hinge region which basically allows for flexibility. The constant portion that is the FC region, this portion or the FC region is the one which actually binds to cellular receptors and to complement. And if you have an antibody which has to bind to a cell surface receptor, it will bind by virtue of the FC region. But if the antibody has to bind to a specific antigen, then it will bind by virtue of the antigen binding portion in the variable region. So when you see with respect to the chromosomes of the heavy chains as well as the light chains, chromosome 14 has IgH or the heavy chain region, chromosome 2 has kappa light chain and chromosome 22 has a lambda light chain. So you can see that when you see the loci of the immunoglobulin heavy chain as well as the both the light chains. So let us look at the heavy chain first. You can see that the heavy chain has three portions, something which is coded with V, something which is coded with D, something which is coded with J. So both all these three regions, V, D and J, these will make the variable portion of the heavy chain. Whereas the last one that is C will make up the constant portion. Now when you come to the light chains, you have something in the kappa where you have a V portion and a J portion. You don't have a D portion. So whereas it is V, D, J in the heavy chains, it is only V and J in the light chains. So V and J is the one which will make up the, uh, the variable portion of the light chain that is in here, in this case is the kappa one. And then you have constant portion for the constant uh, portion of that respect to light chain. Similar to kappa, you also have the same thing in lambda, a variable V portion and a J portion which will make up the variable portion of that respective light chain and consequently ahead of that you have the C. So V, D, J in the heavy chain and V and J in both the light chains. Now what happens ahead of that? When you see the light chain, these V and J actually undergo multiple processes of recombination wherein they will lose all the introns in between which are not required. 
the exons which are absolutely essential will come together and this V and J will combine together. And when you see the V portion which is in pink and the J portion which is in yellow, you will see that the J portion is the only one which is the distal one. So it is uh, when it comes to the light chain, it is only the yellow portion which will actually determine which what will bind to the antigen. Okay. Now similarly when you see the heavy chain, you can see that the V, D and J, the D and J come together first, the D and J as a unit combines with the V, it becomes V, D, J and again when it combines with the constant portion, the D and J which is the green and yellow portions actually are the one which are at the distal antigen binding site. So if you have to see the fab that is the antigen binding portion of that respective antibody which is also named as CDR3 or complementarity determining region 3 or which is also called as idiotype. These are all synonyms. These are basically coded by this yellow portion that is a J portion in the light chains and it is coded by the DJ that is the green and yellow portion in the heavy chains. So to enumerate that in more stress you have these things highlighted again. It is the J portion of the light which is actually form forming the antigen binding portion and the DJ which is actually forming the antigen binding portion in the heavy chains. So when you have multiple antibodies, you have to, you have multiple antibody specificities. So for example, you have a phenomenon called as isotypes which is specific to a species. So humans have isotypes as compared to animals which have a different isotypes. So uh, a human isotype will uh, not cross react uh, will not cross react against another human's isotype it will cross react against another species isotype which can be of animals like monkeys so in humans we have five heavy chain isotypes that is by the mnemonic gam d g a m d e i g g i g a i g m i g d i g e and similarly you have two light chain isotypes that is kappa and lambda amongst uh, multiple individuals of a species you have something which is specific to an individual between individual 1 and individual 2 and that is called as allotype. So that is why if one individual gets uh, stem cells from another individual that is called as an allogenic transplant because I have something which is specific for me whereas he has something which is specific for him. So that phenomenon is called as allotypes and if he donates me the stem cells that will be called an allogenic stem cell transplant. And within an individual specific to an antibody is a phenomenon called as idiotype. That idiotype is basically CDR3 or the antigen binding portion on the variable distal portion. So that is specific to the antibody within an individual. So idiotype is that unique structure of the antigen binding portion of the antibody molecule which provides specificity for a respective antibody.